Now I love a good panning shot, but sometimes you just don't get it right. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can fake the motion blur in a panning shot, and trust me, it will change your life. Stick around. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here at Benham Media. My name is Nathan and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of your wonderful smiling faces here today. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. Now before we get started, I'm just gonna let you know that I'll use the hashtag over on Instagram, bmpix2020. And if you are a photographer, or in fact you like taking photographs, please consider using that hashtag. That way I will look at your photographs and shout you guys out on this channel. Speaking of this channel, if you've not yet done it, please consider subscribing because now is a fantastic time to do so. And that way you can stay up to date with all the wonderful things that we are gonna to try to do here at Ben & Media. Now, onto this video. Like I said before, I love a good pan and shot. It is so, so good. If I see one on my feed or anything, I'm double tapping it because I, I, the skill and the perfection that goes into a pan and shot is, oh, is great. And when you nail one, when you sit there and you go, oh, that is absolutely brilliant. It just makes you feel good, it makes the viewer feel good, and a lot of photography fans really enjoy them. Now if you're not sure what a pan and shot is, let me quickly explain. It is when you've got a subject, either a runner or a vehicle or anything like that, and it's moving at speed. And what you're trying to do is that you're trying to match it, and you're trying to go at the same speed and try to catch it nice and crisp, sort of like in a frozen motion, but the entire background is all blurred. And when you get it, it is, oh, so good. But every now and then, you can get it wrong. Quite often you can, because sometimes you don't match the speed of your subject, or something happens, or for this example, as I was trying to get the taxi cab in my viewfinder, it sort of went across and it sort of slowed down because another car pulled in front of it. So as much as the taxi is perfect in, in frame, the background isn't that blurred. So I decided, to make it look better. And I'm gonna show you how you can fake motion blur in Photoshop. So let's dive into the laptop and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the photograph that we are going to play with today. Now, as you can see, there's slight motion blur in the background, but this car here sort of pulled up in front of him. So he sort of slowed down a little bit, so so did I. So I didn't quite get the clean shot that I wanted. So. So all we're gonna do is that we're gonna blur this little background and make this picture just a little bit better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer by right clicking on this layer. I'm gonna go duplicate layer, just like that. And now I'm gonna select the taxi because I wanna separate the taxi from the background itself. So if we come to our lasso tool like this and then we go select and mask. And what we're gonna to try to do is that we're just gonna select the taxi itself. So if we just paint over the taxi like this, Photoshop does a fantastic job in selecting it quite well, but like that. Okay, so we just need to tidy up a little bit. So I'm gonna go Control and Plus to zoom in. And I'm just gonna tidy up these rough little bits. Now, of course, I do recommend that you take a little bit more time than what I am with doing this. I'm just buzzing through it for this example. Okay, so control zero, we'll have a nice little look. So that's the taxi sort of selected. If you want, you can bring up the capacity a little bit so you can just have a nice proper little look. Now, what I'm also gonna do here is that with these windows, because obviously the background can be seen through the windows. So I'm gonna zoom in again, and I'm gonna paint around the window as well, because I only want the taxi cab to be sort of in perfect view there. So there we go. So we're just gonna do a little bit like this. And this will just give you that little bit more of a reality to the shot. Look, doesn't look so much like you've actually manipulated it either. All right, so we're just gonna do a little bit like that. There we go. So that is what we're gonna cut out. So we're gonna come down here. Okay, so what we wanna do is that we want to bring it in as a new layer, but with no mask. So if we go into like that, and you'll see we've just got the taxi cab. So if we take them away, just gives us the taxi cap. 
that's all we want. So now we're going to turn off the top layer of just a taxi cab, select the second layer, and we're gonna come onto this one here and we're gonna right click and we want the quick selection tool. And we're just going to select the cab in the middle. So here we go, selecting the cab. All right, just wanted to see if you can unselect the parts of the background because you don't really want that. I'll explain to you why in a moment. So there we go. So that's sort of the cab selected. Now if we go up to edit, content where fill, I'm gonna to try to delete that cab altogether. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more about how to use Content Aware Fill, I'm gonna leave a card up in the top, so it gives you more of a rough idea, but I'm just gonna quickly buzz past this bit, because we just wanna get rid of the taxi cab on this layer, and this gives you an example of what it's done. Okay, so we're quite happy with that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across here, and I'm gonna tell Photoshop to not use the taxi or the cab or the car here as represented. So it's gonna have another little bit of a think. There we go. And we're gonna do a new layer. No, we're not, we're gonna do its current layer. Let's do that, shall we? So we're gonna go into its current layer. It's gonna come out. And then that should completely and utterly disappear. There we go. So we're gonna deselect it by Control D and get rid of that. Now, please feel free to obviously neaten all this up but I'm not gonna do that for this example. So if you go and make the top layer visible again, you will see that we now have the taxi and the background separate, but we're only gonna work with the background for now. So we'll keep that second layer selected. We're gonna go up to filter, come down to blur, and we're gonna come down to motion blur. Now this is where you will get your sort of like the, the zoom motion blur a little bit and you can decide how far you want to go so let's go up to 20 just for an example here that's not a lot really is it so we're going to come back up here again and you can play about with this as much as you like there we go you can see it in real time so we've got a nice and nice and nice go up to 200 shall we so that gives it a nice motion blur and when you select that as well you see there we go you've got the, the taxi in complete and utter crisp focus and the background around it is all blurry so there we go that is the nitty gritty of it and of course you can go away and have a bit of a fiddle which is what I'm about to show you now but guys that is the simple way of creating motion blur thank you right and that is it that is how you can fake motion blur now of course I went into it a little bit more and played around with it and this is sort of what I've ended up with so have a look at this Do you know what I mean? It makes such a huge difference. Yeah, it's a nice photograph, but it's a sort of a nothing photograph, but you add that little bit of motion blur, that little bit of movement, it literally turns, a, it brings it to another level. And now that you know this, that you can sort of like, even if you, like I highly recommend attempting to do panning shots. I love trying to get them to, to work. I like, I've nailed it a couple of times. Sometimes I've completely and utterly failed and I've had to use this technique to make the photograph better. But give it a go, don't be afraid. Just go out there, go into your city, go into your town, go into your village, go to your local sports center and see if you can catch some runners. It can really bring another level to your game. And of course, don't be afraid to sort of fiddle about with it, make the colors pop, make the different layers pop and get rid of any of the junk in the background that you don't want. So guys, that is it, done and dusted. There's not really much more for me to tell you about this particular sort of skill. But what we will do is that we will dive into the hashtag because we've had some wonderful people add to it. So let's come here and we'll put the screen record on. Yes. And there we are. So we are in BM Picks and we're gonna go into Recent. And here we are. I was going to scroll down a little bit because there was one that really caught me on. It's this one right here. So Victoria Barbaran Photography. Absolutely brilliant. I love the reflections of this, how crisp the water is, how smooth it is. A fantastic photograph. I've really commented and told you how much I liked it. But a really, really, really good job. Well done for you there. Let's pan down a little bit more. That's one of my ones there. Woo! Let's have a quick little look as well, shall we? Do, do, do. This one right here. 
Again, ah. Now I know how to say her name. Now Victoria, again, I love your night trails. Your long exposure work is so, so good. Really, really fantastic sort of cross sections of going across one way, that red light coming, scrooping around, scrooping, swooping around. Really, really, really cool photograph. Again, well done. And I'm gonna give another shout out to the wonderfully talented, oh, there's another one for you there, Victoria. Well done, that's really, really cool actually. I love those clouds, that's really, really nice. And of course, let's go over to record it now, mate, your photography, the way that you are now looking at photographs, it, you are coming to another level now. You are really trying to get the dynamic. I love your black and white work at the moment. So yes, another shout out for you. Uh, but guys, please continue to use this hashtag. It will mean so much to me. Um, that way I can promote more of your work and that's the whole point behind why I have this. But guys, that is it, done and dusted for this video. Thank you so much for taking the time. If you have lasted this long, maybe give the uh, little thumbs up down in the corner and maybe drop me a comment. Tell me what else you would like to learn or tell me what else you'd like to see on the channel and I'll do my best. We're coming into a new year. Hopefully 2021 will be grr, the year that can take it all together again. But guys, until next time, thank you. I've been Nathan, you've been sensational. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah, 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 mwah.